other two questions. In September 2013, ETC Group published a study Who will feed us? The industrial food chain or the peasant food webs? which demonstrated that the industrial food chain uses 70% of the world's agricultural resources to produce just 30% of our global supplies, while the peasant food web provides 70% of the global food supply using only 30% of agricultural resources. So, what is, uh, what, what is the real usefulness of the industrial food chain? And what we really need to feed the growing population around the world and to reduce the impact on climate change? Well, the industrial food chain is, is, is actually worse than all of that. It's, uh, I think we uh, undersold the, the, the risks of the industrial food chain in that report, and we're actually going to be updating that report in the next uh, few weeks. The, uh, mm. To us, if you look at the industrial food chain more clearly, what they, they do is provide us at the retail level with a bill of around $8 trillion per year for our food system. It, so as we pay at the retail level for, for the industrial food chain. At the same time, we are paying about, what is it now, $3.5 trillion per year uh, in additional health costs because of the industrial food chain and in additional and, and losses of wages or livelihoods because of, the, of, of being ill as well. And that's a, an FAO figure. So literally... Uh, besides, uh, for every dollar we spend in the industrial food chain to buy food and use food, we're spending another 50 cents to mitigate the damages caused by the food we're eating from that industrial food chain. And that chain is also wasting huge amounts of money. And so it's not just at the consumer end, it's wasting money and it's wasting food all on the chain, about 40%, sometimes 50% of the food that they touch from, from uh, the field to fork is wasted. Uh, through the system and is tragically wasted when it is needed. And of course, a quarter of the food that they produce is wasted because it is overconsumed. It's food that's making us sick because of obesity problems and other health problems because of overconsumption of foods. So I, it's hard to imagine a worse food system than the industrial food chain. They, mm -hmm. they are a disaster. And we need to regain control of, the, of our food system and move towards support for the peasant food web which has proven itself to be highly diverse, much more environmentally sensitive, vastly more environmentally sensitive, and more able to feed people. If you compare the capacity of the industrial food chain to reach poor people and feed them who are hungry, mm -hmm. they can't do it. They have not succeeded in doing it for the last 60 years. Who is feeding those who are hungry? Mm -hmm. The only people feeding those who are hungry are peasants. They're the only ones who are getting at least some food, not enough food because they're not allowed to, uh, but, not, but, they, but the only ones who are getting any food at all to those who are hungry are, are, are peasant farmers. Mm -hmm. and also in terms of impact on climate change, peasant farmers are better than the industrialized food chain. Absolutely, in terms of energy, in terms of water, in terms of, of again, flexibility in the system to adjust to new conditions, the industrial food chain is not a flexible system at all. Hmm. Okay, so the last question. Summing up, in the last decades, the power of big agricultural corporations in the world has increased, and with it the monopolization and industrialization of many phases of the global food supply chain. At the same time, small farms are losing power, and this is a serious threat for preserving a sustainable agricultural system. What is, in your opinion, the future scenario of the agricultural system and what are the main factors and trends this scenario depends on? Well, there, there's two scenarios, uh, really. Uh, the scenario being promoted uh, by most governments, including most United Nations agencies and certainly by the companies, is that we need to increase uh, food production by at least 50% between now and 2050. We need to uh, increase access to water and energy by about 70% between now and the year 2050. Uh, 
we've got to we've got a huge problem. We need to increase meat and dairy consumption by 70 percent between now and 2050. So they're talking about this massive need for more energy, more water, more meat, more dairy products, and so on uh, in the in the decades ahead. Um, and that, of course, can't be done. That is simply impossible. We will not be able to do that. Uh, the alternative scenario is we need to look to pest agriculture, who use so much less to produce so much more. And we need to, to help them to diversify and strengthen that system. Uh, we need to decentralize the system to, to allow uh, farmers to reach consumers more easily and to have a dialogue between the farmers and the consumers at the, at the community levels around the world. And we need to, make, to, to protect their interests and increase their access to diversity. Um, we need to reduce the energy requirements. We need to, to get rid of the synthetic uh, chemicals and, and fertilizers. So we need to... Um, Make sure that that uh, the the uh, the right diversity of foods is actually being grown. If we can't do that, uh, we won't have food. So the two scenarios are very stark and clear for us. And we also may, by the way, need to reduce, uh, in total at least, the, the meat and dairy production that we have to to, to make sure it's, it's the level which is, in terms of human health, is safe for us. If we, uh, the, the peasants have a very clear, workable, and inexpensive model. Mm. And it will work and feed us. The model being proposed by the industrial food chain is manifestly unworkable. It cannot be achieved. So, yes. in a way, you can say, there, yes, there's two scenarios, but there's really only one choice. Mm. Okay. And, and we hope the second one would be the choose one. Absolutely. 